This is Django Reinhardt. He developed his own style of music now known as Gypsy Jazz. The idea was to play jazz but then purely on string instruments. Some say Django was playing guitar solos before playing solos even became a thing and he inspired countless of guitarists including B.B. King, Jeff Beck, Jerry Garcia, Jimmy Page, which then also means you and me. It's still played all around the world and today we're going over the most important elements of this style. So today I'm joined by Adrian Holovadi, a gypsy jazz player for over 20 years. You just released your own record. I made a solo record, yes, melodic guitar music. And you are the founder of? Sound Slice. Yeah, Sound Slice. I've seen that before, beautiful stuff. But today we're taking a deep dive into Django's unique style from basic to advanced. There's a certain uh, cozy feel. It makes you feel like you're at a Parisian cafe or something. It's very happy, kind of relaxed music. We can boil it down into Something very basic, right? Yeah, for sure. You can start with some easy uh, chord voicings that you probably already know. Okay. And we'll build on top of that slowly and make it more complicated. And then at the end, we can play what we just did? I think so. That's a promise. Okay, <laughs> let's go. So level one, what's the most basic form of what you just did? Well, we're doing a very classic chord progression called the 1625 rhythm changes. 1625 in the key of G major? G major. Okay, so one is the G. One is G, six is E minor, and then A minor, and D7. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You do two beats per chord. Okay, so let's do it. One. All right, it sounds cool, but we're also talking about lead guitar. Well, the most basic thing you can do is just play the, the root. Mm. In this case, it's G. And maybe uh, just to pick another note, let's also play a D which is the five, the fifth. Okay, so the tonic and the fifth in the key of G. Yep. Okay, let's try it out. Yeah, let's sounds. just limit ourselves to that and okay. see what happens. Okay, three, four. Cool. All right. It sounds pretty jazzy already to me. Yeah, yeah, you can do things with the phrasing even though you're yeah. limited in the notes. Yeah, all right. But, I mean, we all know this is two campfires for me. So let's, uh, let's move away from this open chords. Can we go somewhere else? Yeah, generally it, when you play this style of rhythm, you're not going to do any open chords and that's because you mute a lot with your left hand. Yeah. And that's not possible with open chords. So let's try doing some bar chords. Okay, so we play G major like this. Yep. And then E minor. E minor. Let's make it E minor seven for an okay, extra yeah. jazzy. We remove cover. the pinky, just like this. Cool. And then A minor seven. D seven. All right. Let's play it twice. Three, four, and. Yeah. It's more jazzy already, right? And I hear some cool melodies on top of this. What can we do? Not two notes, a little bit more. More than two notes. Let's let's expand to the arpeggio. Okay. So those are the notes of G major chord. Ooh, so that's you can basically visualize a C major chord going up to the tenth fret on the A string, and then play it like this, the C shape. Then, yeah, if you want to <laughs> go out there. Okay, cool. And you can do yeah. that on all the chords. All the chords. Uh, no, it's if if you try to outline all the chords, <laughs> it sounds great. sounds kind of robotic and not very musical. So yeah. uh, I'll try to stick to just the G major and then halfway through switch to D. Oh, okay. D7. So the arpeggio of D. Arpeggio of D. Okay. Let's see how it sounds. One, two, three. stuff in there but yeah it was mostly G and D. We get to that right? We we'll get, get to, to that. that. So G and then Exactly. How, how do you see a D arpeggio lying on the uh, neck here? 
Oh, D7. Yeah. D7. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you play those over the two chords. Yeah. Over the G and the E minor, you can play G because it's very close. They're basically the same thing. Yeah, basically the same chord. And then over A minor 7 and D7. Play a D7. Play a D7. All right, sounds great. That's not that difficult. We can do that. Um, in terms of chords, is there some someplace else we can go? In this style, we usually throw a 6 in over the major chord. Okay. So for G, that would add an E note, which is the 6. And you would have like a like this chord, which is a G6. Ah, okay. So for those that don't know, a 6 in this case is just the 6th note from the G major scale. If you were to play the G major scale up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we that's add, six. yeah, that's the E note, and we add that note to the G chord. It's got a nice jazzy color. Yeah, so we just play. That's a different voice. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, for the E minor, let's try this one just to yeah, add sure. another option. E minor. Okay, it's the same chord but a different voicing, right? Yep. Uh, and on the E minor, you do this. A minor for that. A minor. Sorry. And then D D nine. Just to get okay. another option there. Yeah. So we add now the ninth note of D. To the D7 chord. Okay, so the new progression sounds like this. Three, four. Am I playing it correctly with the technique? Well, uh, there's, this is like a whole other video's worth, but it sounds okay. Uh, things to think about are how long you let that second one ring out. Okay. Is it like... Like kind of a short one, or is it? Okay. There's there's much room for variation there. It kind of depends on your own preferences. Yeah. And I what also swing. noticed like your pick is different. Is that a jazz pick or uh, or like gypsy jazz pick? There is such a thing. I'm not using one. This is just like a cheap twenty cent pick. That's okay. but the the important it's, thing is that it's thick. It is very thick. Yeah. It doesn't have any bend to it. Okay. And yeah. The reason for that is it gets a better tone and it gets a better volume on these guitars. Yeah. Because it's acoustic music, you you don't have the convenience of just turning up an amp. No. You you really need to rely on your technique and your pick to, uh, to make get it loud. So, yeah, because in the '30s, that's where yeah, Gypsy. Yeah, '30s when this music started, that was before widespread amplification. Yeah, so we couldn't turn to 11. We had to play louder. All right, so the new chords with you playing leads. Can we see how it sounds? One. Sorry for interrupting your vibe, but that's <laughs> definitely a cool thing. What is that? In uh, this is a classic uh, Django Reinhardt move where Ooh. It's, it's called an enclosure technically, where you have Show a me. note and you play the one just above it, and then you play the note, and then you play below it, and then you go back up to it. So. Ah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we're hitting the D, fret 7 on the G string, but we start off. Two like frets up. Two frets up, we do a pull off. And then pick those next two. And then you jumped yeah. up. And then, yeah, this is another very Django thing to do. You do uh, something, and then you do a nice little leap. It's so, you sort of feel like you can breathe again. It's very, uh, yeah. it doesn't sound as, you do it. Is that also because of the, the pick? It sounds so. Uh, there's so many variables, the guitar. You're also picking down everything, right? Yeah, in this in this style, to get a good tone and a good volume, I try to pick down as much as possible. Cool. Yeah. 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 And yeah. also play close to the bridge if you yeah. can. Okay. It gets a better tone. Bunch of nonsense. <laughs> uh, that's really beautiful. So enclosure, that's the technique. You're playing one note, but instead of just playing one note, that's boring. We play one above, uh, you go on it below, and you go back. Just a little frivolous embellishment, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. It's very in the style. Yeah, nice. Um, how does it sound on the chords? Let me hear it. One, 
Do these chords stay the same the entire song? Um, well, there's another part to it that we haven't done yet. Uh, should we do it? Or? <laughs> sure. I think we can pull it off. Yeah, it's just four chords so far. We can pull it off. So what's next? We play the same thing two uh, two times. G, G minor. G6 and then G7. Okay, and then C. And C sharp diminished. Ooh. Okay, now, so. And now we're 1, 6, 2, 5 where all the chords are dominant, so that means G, E7, A7, D7. Ah, that's a pretty classic turnaround, right? Classic so turnaround. G7. You're at the top. Ah, okay. That's the blues for you. That's sorry. two blues for me. <laughs> <laughs> no blues legs. Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, new chord progression. It sounds cool. Um, play it one more time in total together. Sounds good. One, two. Should we pick up the pace a little bit for that? Yeah, yeah. You count down. I go with you. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Perfect. Sweet. We got it. Yeah. So is there one more trick, one more jazz trick, gypsy jazz trick we can inject into our playing? Sure. Well, one thing that's, uh, that Django Reinhardt did a lot is bending strings. And Finally. So like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I should be more precise about that. <laughs> There's certain notes that <laughs> s immediately sound like rock or blues music. Yeah. And there are certain notes that sound like Django. Okay. And uh, show me the Django. The Django ones uh, are the the nine and the six. So if you bend up to the nine or bend up to the six, that sounds super Django-y. Shall we? Yeah, let's just hear it. That three, four. <laughs> Sorry for stopping you, but that's. Immediately, in, like it's not a rock lick, it's not a blues lick. Yeah, it's its, it's own thing. Uh, yeah, but also the way you bend towards that note is a bit slow, and also the starting point is different in, in my ears. Like mm. uh, the first one you did, was it? Or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you don't even start on the G, but you start on a G sharp and you bend to an A. Yeah, well, I mean, with acoustic guitars, the strings aren't thin enough to have a, a two fret bend. Yeah. A whole tone bend, so yeah, always. A half a, a tone. Yeah, that's funny. So you bend from fret nine to ten nine to on ten. the B string. <laughs> that's so yeah. funny. So we can combine that with the enclosure thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And do something like. So we're bending up to the sixth. That's just an G major arpeggio. Exactly. It's really funny. So we do that enclosure, up the octave, and then down just via the G major arpeggio. Ah. Yeah. So you just always, the target note where you want to go, you start a semitone below it. And that starting point is so sort of chromatically, it, it catches you off guard, sort of me, and then yeah. it's immediately that. Exactly. It's so jazzy and so or so gypsy jazzy basically. <laughs> Super cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Funny how that works. And hitting the other note, the nine, can you do a nine? Okay. I love it. Yeah. So you just did Basically, or yeah. something in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you bend from nine to ten, and should it be slow? There's definitely an art to it. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I can say is listen to Django, and you'll internalize the timing 
the micro timing really of how he does it. You're always referencing Django. He is the guy, right? The gypsy? Yeah, guy. he's kind of the inventor of the style back in the 1930s. He passed away in 1953. And he invented this idea of jazz swing music played on string instruments because at the time it was always with a drummer mm -hmm. and that's not really common in this style to have a drummer the rhythm comes okay. from the guitars so i'm the drummer with you're the, the drummer man la pompe it's called la pompe la technique? pompe yeah that's this that's yeah la pompe. <laughs> i feel like a proper uh oh he's left Oh, I'm laughing uh, okay. in Good a very spirit. not bad way. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right, so we got the Gypsy, we got the Django bands, we got the Enclosure, we got the Arpeggio, the G and the D7. We're coming a long way. Is there one more thing we can do, maybe for the chords first? We can do this walk-up approach, okay. which I'll just kind of play it first and then we can yeah. talk about it. <laughs> So this what is so fun to play. It sounds really nice, even if it's just you on your own playing. It's this. It's this. Yeah, you got this chromatic, chromatic movement. Yeah, beautiful. Show me. So we start with the G6. Now we go up one fret to G sharp diminished. Perfect. A minor seven. Continue up to B flat diminished. Now we do G over B. Yep. And now we bring it back down. So. Repeat just backwards. And now we do D9. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfecto. It feels very natural, to be honest. It's a nice, it's very a ni uh, yeah. smooth flow. Yeah, nice. All right. And is that it? Or and then uh, for the Second half of it, uh, we can put in a little 2 5, so where it goes G6 to G7, we can instead do D minor 7 to G7. And then the rest is the same. C, C diminished. 1 6 2 5. Yeah. Okay, so we want to try it one more time in total. Let's do it. Uh, let's you determine the pace. Okay. One, two, three, four. Sweet. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> okay, so the chords, I think the chords are are good like this. We shouldn't go any further. I'm sort of maxed out. <laughs> uh, so we talked about the arpeggios, the Django bands, the enclosure, enclosure. different arpeggios, combining them. Many cool things. Shall we put it all together? Sh let's put it all together and see how it sounds. Sounds good. What tempo should I play? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Great. Ah, not I bad. Very nice rhythm. Yeah, thank you. I heard a sort of the things you explained coming through your playing, but I guess ultimately you also just had to listen a lot to the genre and just... Yeah, you, know. you kind of internalize things. It's just like learning a language. If you hear it a lot, you'll just, it'll kind of get into your brain. Yeah. Some of these ideas can be incorporated into other styles. And... Absolutely. Yeah. Throw in a gypsy jazz lick here and there is always a good thing to do. Anyway, thank you so much, Adrian, for Thanks being Thanks for here. having me. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun playing this, and I hope to see you next time with another video. Cheers, have a lovely day. Yeah, it's good.